G'day folks, just wanted to uh, do a quick touch base with everyone um, as we're starting into 2017 and uh, first of all I just want to say a shout out to everyone who subscribed. Um, towards Christmas there I hit the magic 100 um, subscribers which I know by a lot of people on YouTube standards is you know, no big deal but for me it was quite significant that uh, there's another 100 people out, uh, people out there that are interested in what I'm doing and and uh, want to watch the videos. So for everyone to subscribe, thank you very much for doing so. For everyone that just comes along and watches the videos, um, thank you for your support too. Um, I've enjoyed doing it and I've particularly been pleased with the really positive um, comments and contributions that people have made. I've had some really pleasant conversations with people on the YouTube in the comment section. I've had some um, really nice words of encouragement, so thank you to those people. Um, thank you to my fan who gave me the uh, thumbs down, uh, my very first one for the year. Uh, I don't know who you were, but, you know, it's great to get that as well, I suppose. But no, it's been good fun, and uh, it's really encouraged me to keep doing these models. I'm using it sort of as a way to, to sort of remind myself to get out into the workshop and keep working on the projects. As you can see here, this is a T34 that I'm not finished yet, but on the way to finishing at the moment uh, while I'm recording this video. I did want to say one thing about people that are subscribing. Um, I I really enjoy watching other people's videos, obviously on YouTube about modelling, and uh, it's one of the things that got me inspired to get back into the hobby. And I notice a lot of the folks who do subscribe actually don't have any videos up at all. And I was just going to give a shout out. <clears throat> if you're one of those people, would you, you know, perhaps think this year uh, give it some thought about doing one? Because I really enjoy seeing other people's work, other modellers and what they're doing. I, I think it's great to see the modelling community around the world. Um, that's one of the great things about the internet and YouTube, I guess, is that we can share our, our, um, our common um, enthusiasm and interest in this hobby. So if you haven't done a video before, even if you've just got a, you know, a phone with a camera on your phone, you just use it on that. I don't, have a go. I think some people get a little bit concerned that you know we're all going to be obsessing over the quality of the recordings or uh, the technique or goodness knows the model itself that you're doing. Uh, I can only speak for myself. I really don't mind about any of those things. Obviously, you know, the better the camera you've got, it's more pleasant to watch, if I'm really honest. But if the only camera you've got is a low resolution camera, then I would much rather watch your video with low resolution than not watch it at all. And as far as the model making goes, I know, you know, we often don't like to be um, showing our work because we're worried about peer review. Well, I can only use myself as an example. I'm getting back into this hobby. Uh, I'm not an expert at it by any means. And um, I've got a wealth of knowledge now that I've acquired from watching other people's YouTube videos, which I'm slowly trying to apply uh, to uh, my skills base. And I know that, you know, as I go along, uh, future projects, uh, they'll get better, and I don't really care if this one isn't going to look great compared to what I'll do five years from now, or indeed if I don't improve my skills at all in five years' time and I'm still making them like this. Because at the end of the day, uh, it's as a hobby. I do it for relaxation, I do it for the enjoyment, and for a little bit of quiet time. I also do it because my youngest son does a few models, so I like spending time with him. And when I watch other people's videos, I'm just watching them because I want to see what they're doing and I enjoy watching what they're doing. I enjoy seeing uh, the pleasure they get out of the hobby, the techniques that they use, their thoughts on different products, uh, on different kits. That's been quite useful to me. There's been a couple of kits that I haven't bought because of some of the things I've read online and there's also or seen online, I should say. And, you know, there's been a couple of certainly been more than two kits that I bought because of other modelers sharing with me their experiences with the kit. Um, you know, the subject interests me, and then when I see that how they went with it, it's good. And in the day, again, just to finish up this little bit of a chat about the YouTube thing, nothing that we're making in this hobby is realistic. Um, I'm always reminded of a story, this is going back about five, probably ten years ago now. In a previous life, I worked on one of the state railways in Australia, so I had a lot to do with trains. And I was a member of a local... Um, model railway club which is one of my other interests and a gentleman was building a train a locomotive a model of it a very nice model uh, in a larger scale that actually was a locomotive that i used to see going past the station where i worked on a fairly regular basis so i was quite familiar with this particular locomotive 
And he had weathered it very nicely and he put all these things on it. And that was great, except the real locomotive actually didn't look like that. And the one he made looked like it was, you know, hadn't had a paint job in 20 years. And I knew the actual locomotive that, that he was modelling actually did get cleaned and it had been painted in 10 years. And, and indeed it had a couple of newer panels on it that were even cleaner still because it had a, a, a shunning accident and they replaced a couple of panels. So being naive that I am, I just sort of mentioned that the weathering wasn't, you know, perhaps quite right. And, well, you know, I, I, I was in this gentleman's home at the time and I just created a huge scene where he sort of basically sort of took it that I was being critical of his work and what would I know. So I sort of had to shut my mouth and sit there and, and cop it, knowing full well that actually I did know something because I'd actually, you know, seen this locomotive, probably, possibly even rode on the footplate at some point. Um, so, you know, but the, when I walked away from it, I thought, well, you know, it doesn't really matter. And there were some that were a bit like what he'd done, not this particular example, but there were some. I'm pretty confident, though, and this is even looking at the really good models that are out there, that if we were to take the real subject and um, just magically take it out of its time frame and bring it to, to today, and then we were to take any of our models of whatever skill level you think that modeler is at, and we were to bring it up to one-to-one -one scale and put it next to the real subject, none of our models would look anything like the real thing. Uh, what we're doing at the end of the day is an artistic impression, our interpretation of the model. And we're using techniques that perhaps over-accentuate things or exaggerate things because we want it to be more visible on a smaller model. The manufacturers themselves have done compromises in the design of the of the model because they're thinking about the production techniques they have to use and the costs and all those other things. So at the end of the day, any anything we build, whether it's a tank, plane, ship, whatever it is, spacecraft, it is an interpretation of the real thing. It is not actually a reproduction of it. Uh, it's a piece of plastic. And so for anyone that's worried that you know their technique or their approach to painting models, maybe you don't like weathering at all and you just do them like they're out of the factory, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But what is really useful is for you to be part of the broader community and to show us what you're doing and share it with us. Um, because at least I know I will really appreciate it and like to see your videos, and I'm sure I'm not alone on that. So if you've been a bit reluctant to get on board, uh, yeah, pick a subject, just one model. Don't have to do a whole series of them. Just pick one model and have a go. The other thing is the video production quality. Um, some sites are fantastic. You know the ones I'm talking about. I don't think mine are fantastic. I'm sort of compromising. I just sort of turn the camera on, have a bit of a yak now and then, because I don't really want to go to the sort of levels that some of the other modelers do to record their work, although I do appreciate it. Um, but just whatever you do. If you'd finish the model, put your, put your phone camera on, film it for a few minutes, and tell us a bit about it and what you thought of the kit. Even something like that would be really fun and interesting to see. So anyway, that's my rant over for the 2017. Um, I also just wanted to mention the most popular video on my channel by far is the Hawker Hurricane. And people have probably wondered if it still exists. So before I finish this video, yes, it does exist. Here it is. And I have made some progress on it since the last video I shot. It's You can see it's work in progress, but the wings are joined and the fuselage is together. I've got to put a new cockpit panelling because I mucked up the last one, but I've got that ready to go. So as the course of the year goes on, the Hawker Hurricane will see the light of day again and hopefully we'll get finished before the end of 2017. So if you've watched the first video and you've been wondering uh, what's happened to it, well, yeah, it's still around. So that will be coming. I'm also going to be doing a few more of these sort of build videos. I've got a trumpeter... Um, armoured train that I'm going to be doing shortly for um, Flurry Models um, Forum for the members there and I'm going to put some videos up about that as I do it. Love to hear your thoughts on this approach that I'm doing with the T-34. Do you find those videos interesting or useful or would you um, just rather I showed you the final model? What's your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments. And finally to all those other modelers out there who do do YouTube videos and share them with us. Uh, I'd like to slightly extend a thanks. Uh, I know there's a lot of work involved in some of these videos that I watch online. Uh, they're not easy productions. Some people go to a lot of trouble to make them uh, as good as they can and to share as much as they can about what they're doing. And I really appreciate it. As a fellow modeler, I really appreciate it. It makes me feel like we're part of a broader community. And um, I really appreciate the effort you put into it. And I do enjoy them. And please keep up the effort because um, 
it's one of those things I come home from work I'm a bit stressed I can put on YouTube put it through my TV in my lounge room and sit back and uh, just take my mind off today's troubles and look at what other people are doing and of course get inspired as well to go and do my kit so thank you to all those people that put those YouTube videos out equally thank you to all those people that write reviews and contribute to forums that, you know all the different forums are out there that um, that we have in the Google Plus and so on all right guys have a really good 2017. I hope 2017 brings some good news to you and some happiness. And uh, please, uh, be part of the community, enjoy the hobby, and we'll catch you in the next video.